Okay, so I'm taking a few notes here because, um, <clears throat> you know, we do at our 28 day camp at, at at my facility here in St. Louis. We we go over individualizing your wrestling style because you have a different style of wrestling than I do, and strengths is a big part of it. So um, let me go over one concept here. So um, now you can't be if you. Focusing on your strengths and ignoring your weaknesses. So let's say, what's your weakness, Nick? Uh, I don't like to practice. I like to eat Cheetos and I'm 50 pounds overweight. Okay, well, we got to fix that. Okay, how about um, I can't get off bottom and I'm a wrestler. Well, okay, we got to fix that weakness, okay? We have to fix that weakness, <clears throat> But what if I'm not a very good scrambler? I, I don't like, I'm a controlled wrestler. I don't like those flurries. I try to avoid them. Um, you know, what if I'm, so I, I don't have to be a scrambler, right? What if I don't like tying up really tight with my opponent because I'm not very powerful? Okay, so I might wrestle with a thumb block, forehead to forehead, maybe even farther away. I'm gonna wrestle from operate from space a little bit because now that does that mean that I can't get into the weight room and become stronger no I can become stronger but no matter what I'm not going to be one of the top 10 percent strongest wrestlers in America at my age and weight I just don't have it whereas somebody who's God-given powerful he's going to work to develop his strengths even more to get stronger. So we want to blow up our God-given strengths and our strengths that we can fix. We're going to fix them. What if my strength, what if my weakness is I'm not flexible? Well, I probably should stretch for 10 minutes after every practice. So we don't ignore our weaknesses, but we don't say, um, you know, Kendall Cross was a teammate of mine. He ended up winning the Olympics. And he's talked about this a lot of times. And he's like, he said when he was in middle school, he felt like he was shunned by his coaches. And they never chose him to demonstrate anything. They were always like, oh, this Russ, look at him, look at him, look at that kid. Look at this kid, Russ. Oh, look how amazing he is. It was usually these fast, explosive kids. You know, the little 10-year-old or 12-year-old who runs for 2,000 yards on the football field. And we cater to those kids, right? Well, in wrestling, you can run for 2,000 yards on a football field, but if I collar tie you and I underhook you, I've taken all of your athleticism away. All of it. If I lock my hands on a leg and you sprawl, you're no longer an athlete. See, I can't grab a cornerback. I can't grab a wide receiver. I can't contain them. I, I can't do that in boxing either, right? So um, as far as focusing on your strengths, we like to say this. Write down your strengths and weaknesses. Okay. Which strengths can you fix? Uh, I can't get off bottom. Well, okay. You need to fix that. Right? It's like, I can't catch a pop fly. Okay. Well, then you need to quit baseball or fix that because that is the sport. Okay. But I may not be good at stealing second. I may not be fast. Okay. Then we're not going to be, you're not going to be a base stealer. Okay. Um, what if I'm not very powerful? Okay, you might be a Pete Rose player. You're not going to be a home run hitter. Just give up. Now, sure, if, if you hit some home runs, cool, but we're not going to like stress out and say, I can never hit any home runs. I suck. We're like, no, you can be considered one of the best baseball players in history if you just get on base a lot. So now we say, now look at your strengths that you have to fix because it's part of wrestling. A circle that in red. Look at the strengths that you can't fix. Okay. Um, you know, Kerry Kolat talks about this. He's like 5'3", right? Olympian, three-time world medalist. He says, I don't have leverage. And he doesn't. He's shorter than everybody who wrestles. So is that a weakness he can fix? No, he'll never fix that. Um, you look at a current wrestler, Seth Gross, a very skinny, almost looks frail, but he was fifth in the world last year. Very technical wrestler, great positioning, a great scrambler, by the way. He's never going to be a power wrestler. Kyle Schneider's won two Olympic gold medals. No, one Olympic gold, one Olympic silver. He's considered, he literally is one of the most powerful human beings on planet Earth. But he ain't fast, right? So we like to say this. What's your weakness? Uh, I'm not fast. Then don't wrestle fast. Uh, what's your weakness? 
Uh, I'm not very powerful. Then don't try to be a power wrestler. Who's next? Uh, what's your weakness? Uh, I can't score from space. Ah, uh, then don't try to. Next, right? Because just give up. You're not going to be able to. Now, that doesn't mean you can't develop some footwork and some strength and some flexibility. Yeah, we're going to improve on everything that we can. But you're going to build your wrestling career around being powerful like Kyle Schneider. You're going to build your wrestling career maybe like Jordan Burroughs scoring from space. You might build your wrestling career um, from being a great, um, uh, you know, um, uh, my, well, Kendall Cross was, won the Olympics, right? And, uh, and he was great at turning his opponents. You better not shoot on him. And when he gets on top, he turned everybody. But he was not a great takedown person, right? So he just quit trying to wrestle an explosive style. So when you start to write down your strengths and weaknesses and you say, what's a perceived weakness? What's a weakness I can't? I mean, because it's like, if you don't have leverage, is that a weakness? Okay, but you do, but if you're short and stocky, you do have power and you're harder to score on because, you know, when your legs are this tall and your center of gravity is low, you're very hard to take down. So being a tall wrestler, you have leverage and length and reach, but your legs are harder to protect. So you, so for every, let's say God-given strength and or weakness, you have to learn to choose a style around that. And I would go further to say that in the sport of football, you know, the really powerful guy, he runs the ball. He's the running back. But if you put the, or maybe the wide receiver, wicked fast, usually super skinny, can jump nine foot in the air, very athletic. Let's put the wide receiver on the offensive line. And let's put the offensive lineman at wide receiver. They're not going to make the JV team at their high school. But if you put them in their positions where they're supposed to be, now they might make it to the NFL. Why? Because the coach put them in the right spot. That's the reason I'm aggressively against and very vocal about being against teaching a style of wrestling. You can't teach a style of wrestling. Um, now we can teach some concepts like smart patient wrestling, very technical from the common positions, perlerwrestling.com. That's what we do, right? We built a kind of an empire based on it. We have what, 1,340 kids coming to our, from Australia, Canada, Alaska, Hawaii. They literally come from other countries this summer to train with us. Um, they come from Canada just for weekend training camps to train with us for wrestling. And uh, it's going to be that way in jiu-jitsu at some point in time. So it's okay to have sort of an approach where we're, we're, we're focusing on the laws or the rules of the game. And we're playing the odds and percentages. But I don't think it's good to teach a style of wrestling because we all have our different styles. So, um, you know, if you're not fast, then uh, adjust your, your uh, jujitsu, adjust your boxing, adjust your wrestling so that you're not, you're not trying to be a fast uh, you're not, that's not your style, is it bringing a fast style? And the, the mistake that coaches and parents do, we had a kid, Cole, he actually was, let me see, he was a little 106 pounder as a freshman. I think he lost four times. He's like 51 and four. This year he was undefeated. So he's like 110 and four. He's only a sophomore. He's got two years left. He'll be a, a division one wrestler. Uh, he's been training with us since he was like six years old. So um, this is like two years ago. And we were talking about strengths and weaknesses. He's like, something about being not being fast. And I go, who told you that? He goes, my dad. And he's like, it's always been my problem. And I talked to his dad. I'm like, you're ruining his confidence. Now he is a quick wrestler, kind of short explosive movements. <clears throat> and he won 500 matches and, and kids in middle school wrestling combined. So I mean, he wins a lot of stuff. Won kids nationals twice. But I'm like, here he is. He's got won all this stuff. He's won 500 matches. And, you know, like a seven-year period. And I'm like, and he's doesn't have confidence because his dad preaches to him nonstop about how he's not a fast wrestler. And I'm like, knock it off. This is not a good thing to do to him, right? He's never going to be like, you know, as fast as the fastest wrestler that you see on TV in, in college wrestling. But that's okay. Just don't try to score with fast wrestling tactics. So um, focusing on your strengths, that's what that's all about.